was a humid out here. Oh. Batch number 98 today. How you doing? Now we're gathering our strike water here. We're coming at uh, 172 to start because the mash tun's cold, the grains are cold. And they're cold because of, uh, ta-da, the new air conditioning system. I got it at 69 degrees in here. It's 82 degrees outside, humid as a SOB. If you know what an SOB is. So as I'm getting the water ready, I got the, the mill ready, or the press ready here to do the grapes. And we're going to do some wines. Eventually, I put, put all that together. I decided to paint the board just for the hell of it and got that all cleaned up and sanitized and ready to rock and roll for uh, pressing in the grapes. I hope I get enough grapes between me and my daughter's crop. So let's get on with the, the dough in here. We'll start the dough in. I'm going to cool down quite a bit. Watching that I'm not getting no dough balls here. <clears throat> we'll do a final stir when we get everything in there. Final stir and temperature check. We started with seven gallons of uh, infusion water here. We'll end up sparging a little at, at 170 sparge out. I'm in here at 158 on one gauge, 158 on the other gauge. That's hard for the camera to pick up, but that one says 158. This one says I'm a little lower. 157. Let's get this covered up because we want to be 157, 158 on this batch. 156. As she cools down, she's going to be absolutely perfect. So let's get the cover on here and uh, we'll mash this for uh, one hour. I'm aiming to fix this. I just haven't gotten around to it. Should be good to go on that. Start the vorl off here. I don't want to spill it this time. Oh, she smells. Oh, the smell is awesome. This is after one hour mash. Hang on there, buddy. You can stay in here. Rupert wants to go in the house. It's nice and cool in here. I got it down to 60, 68 degrees. <laughs> so here's our first picture. Coming out nice and fast. <clears throat> and just pour that back in slowly. Stay here. I think we're going to do one more picture. As we put our last Vorloff in, and we're gonna end up sparging a little, I'm sure. I do have a little sparge water ready. I'm loving the color. If I didn't say this is gonna be a plum beer, batch 98. We'll call it uh, Plum Bob. Flame on. We're collecting the uh, rest of our wort. We sparged um, almost a gallon. 
and that water was treated also to 5.8. And we collected most of our wort here. We have uh, just under eight gallons. I know I'm gonna burn off about a gallon and a half during this boil. It's uh, 84 degrees out. Raining, humidity's at uh, 82%. I'm making beer. And my new air conditioning system there seems to be seems to be holding it. It's number 98 here, the plum, pendulum plum, or the uh, plum bob, I call this one, is ready for the first edition of hops. We just achieved the hot break. And, and go to hops. Those are uh, two ounces of the warrior pellet hops. You gotta watch that she don't boil over right away because she's gonna wanna come up. You can see her coming up again. Stand by your uh, your uh, throttle on your stove there. I'm using propane out here. Nice and cool out here with the new air conditioning system. I'm, I'm really happy that I could brew beer and get uh, and stay cool. It's 85 degrees outside and it's humid as all heck. It just got done raining and uh, I'm in here brewing beer. How you doing? I'm doing pretty darn good. So we're happy with this. So we got to set a timer as soon as I find my uh, Surrey here. Surrey set a timer for 45 minutes. Hey Surrey. Set a timer for 45 minutes for my next hop edition. Your timer is set for 45 minutes. Don't be shame. It's the last 15 minutes of batch number 98, Plum Bob. We're going to go with Halletau, Middle Fru, German, 4% AA, Alpha Acids, uh, 2 ounces. So for the last 15 minutes, they're in. And I'm going to go get our work chiller hooked up and everything else, get ready for flame out. Hey, sorry. Set a timer for 15 minutes for flame out. Okay, 15 minutes and counting. That's a new type of uh, yeast we're using. It's called Cali. Premium beer yeast. Classic American ale strain, famous for its clean, neutral flavor and its ability to be used in any style. And this is, emphasizes malt and hops and attenuates very well. So we're gonna give it a shot and see what see what it does on my plum beer. Boy, what an I out. Flame out on the plum bob. <clears throat> Let me take my hot bags right out. Get them out of the way. Let them drain a minute. Good enough. I'm gonna put the work chiller in. It's all sanitized. And she goes. I like to put my cover back on at that time. And we're chilling. Off to the transfer we go here. I don't spill it. <clears throat> like to oxygenate a little by dropping in fast and hard. Like that. So we'll let that get in there. Get ready to get my uh, my plum in. Take it right out. Take it over here. Rinse her off like I always do. She 
shake our plum up. <clears throat> Everything's sanitized. In goes the plum puree. Oh, that's thick. You got the plum puree in. That is thick stuff. And we're going to get our uh, Fur-Made O, which is up here. And oh! I almost put too much in there, but about a spoonful I use. And then we're going to get our yeast. Get that ready. Collect it over just five gallons of wort. About five and a half gallons we got. And we're going to use our Cali yeast here. Sanitize scissors. I'm going to sprinkle her in the top there. Getting my cover on. <clears throat> All about the cleanup. I got my bubbler in. So there you go. Plum Bob, hoo ha! Brew number ninety-eight is complete. That thing's really going a while there, foaming right off the top of that bubbler. Look at that thing. That's in real time too. Nothing sped up on this one. Check that out. All right, batch number ninety-eight. Plum Bob, we're gonna get a reading on it. And go to keg. I got the keg. And sanitizer there full don't forget to take your bubbler out a lot of people can make that mistake I might have a little extra here to even put in a bottle we'll see we'll play that by ear but for now we'll get a read 10 12 14, 10 16 we finished that bubbler out you don't want the back suck valve open off the cake we go with the plumb bob Comes a snake of loveliness. I'm going to shut this down in a few seconds because I know what happens, where the sanitizer is, and how this usually works. She changes the color of barrier. That's it. Perfect. She shut down right at the right time. We just put the plum bob in there. Keg okay, on the left is the plum bob, and we got some all day founders and some uh, jackass beers in there from Hayburner. You know those suckers, eh? All right, we're going to tap the plum bob. Beer, made plum beer we made, plum bob we call it. Let's hope the carbonation's up to snuff. Uh, it seems to be a little better. Wasn't supposed to be a really high carb beer anyway. Let me pour it a little heavy there. We'll shut it on. One finger ahead. It's got a, hard to see in this light I bet. She's got a huh, apricot color almost, I guess. Kind of odd. See, the R is missing in my name there. <laughs> uh, we got a one finger head, a quarter finger head, little finger head, ladies finger head. I don't know what you call it. I know there's warrior and halitow hops in this. And it's supposed to be cloudy. The flocculation was like a low to medium on this uh, Cali yeast that I bought the first time I tried it. So I do expect it to be cloudy and that she is cloudy. I think I'll sit outside and get a, a taste test on this. Now oh, the head's fading quick. They do have some small uh, carbonation bubbles in there. Like I say, she's like an orange apricot color. Kind of odd. She's made with the uh, Warrior, two ounces of Warrior and two ounces of Halitow hops. First time I used the Halitow. we get a taste test on this. <clears throat> I made this before, just a little different recipe. Not bad. 
She comes in at uh, only 4.8%. I'd have to check the sheet, but uh, Proust. Until next time, she's uh, probably a good summer beer. It's a little late on the summer. <laughs>